Dr. Elias Hawthorne stepped off the sleek interstellar shuttle, a prototype vessel made by humans, just in case of such occasions, made the journey to the Nexus Station, somehow made it in one piece, stepped onto the gleaming floor of Nexus Station, the hub of galactic diplomacy. His eyes, accustomed to Earth's warm sunlight, took a moment to adjust to the cool, artificial illumination that bathed the cavernous docking bay. A sea of alien life forms bustled around him, their appendages and sensory organs a dizzying array of evolutionary ingenuity. Elias chuckled to himself, recalling the perplexed faces of his colleagues at the United Earth Embassy when he'd received the invitation. Must be a clerical error, they'd said. Humans aren't supposed to be at the Galactic Convention. But here he was, invitation in hand, ready to represent humanity in a gathering that, by all accounts, he shouldn't be attending. As he made his way through the crowded corridors, Elias couldn't help but notice the reactions of the aliens around him. Some recoiled, their tentacles or feelers curling in apparent disgust or fear. Others stared openly, multifaceted eyes gleaming with curiosity or apprehension. He heard whispers in a cacophony of languages, the universal translators worn by most attendees, struggling to keep up with the rapid-fire exchanges. Is that a human? Impossible! They're not allowed here! By the cosmic egg, it's a death-worlder. Elias grinned, more amused than offended. He'd spent years studying xenobiology and alien cultures, but nothing could have prepared him for the sheer diversity of life forms surrounding him. Beings of crystal and light floated alongside creatures that seemed to defy the laws of physics. Gaseous entities swirled in containment fields, while silicon-based life forms clicked and whirred as they moved. At the center of the station, a massive holographic display showed the schedule of events. Elias approached it, ignoring the way nearby aliens scurried out of his path. He perused the list of seminars and discussions, his excitement growing with each intriguing title quantum entanglement and its effects on interspecies communication, ethics of terraforming, a panel discussion, the future of faster-than-light travel. As he read, a commotion erupted behind him. A group of tall, willowy beings with iridescent skin approached, flanked by what appeared to be security drones. The lead alien, its features a mesmerizing blend of plant and animal characteristics, addressed Elias in a melodious voice. Human, it said the universal translator in Elias's ear struggling to convey the complex harmonics. Your presence here is unexpected. I am Zelax, chief coordinator of the Galactic Convention. May I inquire as to how you came to be here? Elias smiled disarmingly, reaching into his pocket to produce the invitation. Dr. Elias Hawthorne, at your service. I received this invitation a few standard cycles ago. Is there a problem? Zelax's frond-like appendages rippled in what Elias interpreted as agitation. This is most irregular. The Galactic Convention has been a closed event for non-death world species for millennia. Your invitation must be a grave error. Well, Elias said, shrugging his shoulders. I'm here now. Surely it wouldn't hurt to let me attend a few seminars. I promise not to eat anyone. A ripple of alarm passed through the gathered aliens at his joke, and Elias mentally kicked himself. Right, probably not the best time for Earth humor. Zillax conferred briefly with its colleagues, their communication a mixture of subtle color changes and pheromone releases that Elias could only guess at. Finally, the alien turned back to him. We will need to consult with the full Galactic Council on this matter. In the meantime, you may remain in the public areas of the station, but please refrain from entering any of the conference rooms or restricted zones. Elias nodded, hiding his disappointment. Of course, I understand completely. As Zillax and its entourage departed, Elias found himself alone in a sea of alien faces once more. Determined to make the most of his unexpected adventure, he set off to explore the station's promenade. The first thing that caught his attention was a bustling food court filled with an array of exotic aromas that made his stomach growl. Elias approached a stall manned by a gelatinous being with multiple eye stalks. Excuse me, he said politely. What would you recommend for a human palate? The alien's eye stalks swiveled towards him, quivering with what might have been surprise or fear. 
After a moment's hesitation, it extended a pseudopod towards a tray of small, iridescent spheres. These safe, most species, it burbled, the universal translator in Elias's ear struggling to interpret the alien's unique method of speech. Elias smiled and nodded, accepting a small container of the spheres. He popped one into his mouth, savoring the burst of flavors that were simultaneously familiar and utterly alien. It tasted like a cross between a ripe peach and a hint of sea urchin, with an aftertaste reminiscent of cinnamon. As he continued to sample the various alien delicacies, Elias noticed a group of small, avian-like creatures watching him intently. Their feathers shimmered with bioluminescent patterns, and their beaks clicked rapidly as they conversed among themselves. Feeling bold, Elias approached them with a friendly wave. Hello there, I'm Elias. I couldn't help but notice your beautiful plumage. May I ask what species you are? The aliens exchanged glances, their feathers flashing in complex patterns. One of them stepped forward, its head tilted curiously. We are Zephyrians, it chirped, the translator rendering its high-pitched vocalizations into comprehensible English. You are the human everyone is talking about. Are you not afraid to be here among so many alien species? Elias chuckled, shaking his head. Not at all. I find it fascinating. There's so much diversity here, so much to learn. I've spent my life studying alien cultures, but this, this is beyond my wildest dreams. The Zephyrians seemed to relax slightly, their feathers softening into gentler hues. They began to ask Elias questions about Earth and human culture, their initial wariness giving way to genuine curiosity. As they chatted, Elias realized that his responses were becoming increasingly difficult for the aliens to understand. He tapped his ear, frowning. I'm sorry, I think my universal translator is malfunctioning. Do you know where I might be able to get a new one? The Zephyrians exchanged looks again, their feathers flickering rapidly. Only the Galactic Council has access to the advanced translators needed for death world languages, one of them explained. You would need to request one from them directly. Elias sighed, realizing that this might be more complicated than he'd anticipated. I see. Well, I suppose I'll have to find a way to speak with them then. Thank you for your help and for the lovely conversation. As he bid farewell to the Zephyrians, Elias noticed a commotion near the center of the promenade. A large crowd had gathered, and at its heart stood Zillax and several other imposing alien figures. Recognizing this as his best chance to address the council, Elias made his way towards them. The crowd parted as he approached, a mixture of fear and fascination rippling through the assembled aliens. Zillax turned to face him, its frond-like appendages undulating with barely contained agitation. Dr. Hawthorne, it said, its voice a complex melody of tones, the Galactic Council has convened an emergency session to discuss your presence here. We have reviewed our records and discovered a critical error in our invitation system. It appears that your invitation was generated due to a misclassification of Earth in our database. Elias raised an eyebrow, intrigued. A misclassification? In what way? A tall, crystalline being stepped forward, its faceted body refracting the light in mesmerizing patterns. Your planet was erroneously labeled as a Class Three Harmonious World, rather than the Class Twelve Death World. It truly is. This oversight allowed the automated system to include you in the invitation list. I see, Elias said, nodding thoughtfully. And now that I'm here, what do you propose I do? Before he could finish his sentence, a group of large armored beings stepped forward. Their exoskeletons gleamed under the station's lights, and their multiple limbs ended in what appeared to be both natural and cybernetic appendages. Zillax's fronds drooped slightly. I apologize, Dr. Hawthorne, but until the Council reaches a decision, we must insist that you remain in a secure location. These Cronaxian guards will escort you to a holding cell. Please understand this is for the safety of all attendees. Elias felt a flash of frustration but quickly suppressed it. He knew that showing any sign of aggression would only reinforce their fears about humans. Instead, he nodded calmly. I understand. Lead the way. 
The Cranaxian guards surrounded him, their movements precise and coordinated. As they led him through the station's winding corridors, Elias couldn't help but marvel at the advanced technology and alien architecture surrounding him. After several minutes, they arrived at a small, sterile room. It was comfortable enough, with a strange, gelatinous bed-like structure and a view of the stars through a force field window. One of the guards gestured for him to enter. Thank you, Elias said, stepping inside. I don't suppose any of you would be willing to chat for a bit. I have so many questions about this place. Most of the guards simply turned and left, but one remained, its multifaceted eyes studying Elias with what seemed like curiosity. I will stay, the guard said, its voice a low, rumbling sound. You may call me Krixta. Over the next few hours, Elias and Krixta engaged in a fascinating conversation. The Cronaxian, while initially cautious, seemed to warm up to Elias's genuine interest and respectful questions. As they talked, Elias began to piece together some intriguing information about the galactic classification system. So you're saying Earth is classified as a Class 12 death world? Elias asked, leaning forward with interest. Krixta's exoskeleton shifted in what Elias had come to recognize as a nod. Affirmative. It is considered one of the most dangerous planets in known space. Elias furrowed his brow. But how did you come to that conclusion? Has anyone from the Galactic Council actually visited Earth? The Cronaxian guard hesitated before responding. Negative. All data on Earth comes from long-range scans and probe data. Probe data? Elias echoed, his mind racing. Wait a minute. Krixta. How many probes have actually made it to Earth's surface? The guard's cybernetic implants whirred as it accessed the information. Records indicate none. All probes were lost before reaching the planet's surface. Elias's eyes widened as the pieces fell into place. Of course! Earth's strong magnetic field and the sun's gravity well, they must have pulled in and destroyed the probes before they could get accurate readings. Krixta's posture changed, indicating surprise. This, this is not information we had considered. If true, it would mean our classification of Earth is based on incomplete data. Elias nodded excitedly. Exactly. Earth isn't a hellish death world. It's a vibrant, diverse planet with a wide range of ecosystems. Yes, it can be dangerous, but it's also beautiful and full of life. The Cronaxian guard seemed to ponder this information for a moment. This is significant. I must report this to the council immediately. As Krixta moved to leave, Elias called out, Wait! Before you go, could you possibly get me a working universal translator? It would really help me explain things to the council. The guard hesitated, then nodded. I will see what I can do. As the door closed behind Krixta, Elias sat back on the gelatinous bed, a smile playing on his lips. Perhaps this accidental diplomatic mission would turn out to be more important than anyone could have imagined. He had a feeling that the relationship between Earth and the galactic community was about to change dramatically. As Elias stood before the Galactic Council, now equipped with a functioning universal translator, he felt a mixture of excitement and nervousness. The chamber was filled with representatives from countless alien species, all eyes, or equivalent sensory organs, fixed upon him. Thank you for hearing me out, Elias began. I believe there's been a significant misunderstanding about Earth due to incomplete data. You see, the probes you've sent were likely destroyed by our sun's gravity, or Earth's magnetic field, before they could gather accurate information. A collective murmur rippled through the assembly. Zelax. Acting as the spokesperson asked, If this is true, then please, describe your world to us. We are eager to learn. Elias smiled, relieved at their openness. Well, Earth is a beautiful, diverse planet. One of its most defining features is the abundance of water. In fact, over 70% of our planet's surface is covered in it. We drink it, play in it, use it for cleaning. Before he could continue, the council chamber erupted in chaos. 
Aliens of all shapes and sizes recoiled in horror, some emitting high-pitched shrieks, others slamming appendages on their desks. A bulbous, gelatinous being near the front quivered violently as it spoke. Did you say water? Dihydrogen monoxide? Elias nodded, suddenly recalling the scientific term. Yes, that's correct. Is there a problem? The alien's body pulsated with what seemed to be a mixture of fear and anger. Problem? Problem? Dihydrogen monoxide is the most lethal substance known to sentient life. It corrodes metals, erodes stone, and can cause death in countless species through inhalation. Another council member, a being composed of swirling gases, chimed in. And you say your planet is covered in it? That you willingly consume it? Elias tried to interject. But it's essential for life on Earth. Enough! Zillax's voice cut through the commotion. Guards, seize this creature immediately. We cannot risk further contamination. As the Cronaxian guards moved to surround him, Elias attempted to explain. Wait, please. You don't understand. But his protests fell on deaf ears. The council member who had first reacted to the mention of water was now addressing the assembly. I move to immediately reclassify Earth as a level 13 death world, permanently off limits to all galactic citizens. A chorus of agreement echoed through the chamber. As the guards began to escort him out, Elias heard Zillax's final proclamation. Motion carried. Earth is hereby classified as a level 13 death world. All records of this encounter are to be sealed. The human is to be returned to his planet immediately, and a quarantine barrier will be established around the entire solar system. Elias found himself being rushed through the station, alien diplomats scattering in fear as he passed. His mind raced, trying to comprehend how a simple misunderstanding about water had escalated so dramatically. As he was ushered onto a small, automated shuttle programmed to return him to Earth, Elias couldn't help but laugh at the absurdity of the situation. He had come to the Galactic Convention hoping to foster understanding between Earth and the wider Galactic community. Instead, he had inadvertently confirmed their worst fears and further isolated his home planet. The shuttle's doors sealed, and Elias felt the familiar pull of acceleration as it departed Nexus Station. As the stars streaked by, he pondered the implications of what had transpired. Earth, it seemed, would remain a mystery to the Galactic community for the foreseeable future a planet so terrifying that even its most abundant resource was considered a deadly threat. Elias sighed, realizing that true interstellar diplomacy might be even more challenging than anyone on Earth had imagined. But as he gazed out at the vast expanse of space, a small smile played on his lips. After all, if humans could thrive on a planet that the rest of the galaxy considered unsurvivable, who knew what other incredible feats they might achieve? As Earth came into view, blue and beautiful, Elias made a mental note. Next time, maybe start with something less controversial than water. Like, say, the fact that humans could eat capsaicin for fun. On second thought, perhaps some things were better left unsaid, Elias thinking to himself. This also would explain the absence of alien encounters and why they are all staying away.